ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium, home of the North Quincy Raiders. On behalf of Superintendent Kevin Mulvey and North Quincy Principal Rob Shaw, well, hello everyone, and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium, where today the North Quincy Raiders will play host to the Silver Lake Lakers in the final game of the Fall 2 football season for both of these teams. My name is Jonathan Caleri, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. Uh, North Quincy will come into this game. Again, this is their final game. Uh, they've... Uh, Lost last week a tough matchup to the Plymouth South Panthers uh, in a Patriot League Division Championship. Uh, tough game, losing that game by a score of 27 to 24 on a last minute touchdown by the Panthers. And North Quincy is looking to end their season on a positive note here at the stadium. Uh, being joined up here in the booth by Damien Ritchie of uh, QATV Sports Night fame. Uh, so Damien, thanks for joining me up here and uh, reuniting the Sports Night uh, wisdom that we uh, we have going on. It's uh, always a pleasure to be uh, back in the booth. John, we go back a long way, so <laughs> we don't uh, need any warming up. <laughs> That's for sure. So, all right, well, uh, we're going to take a pause here for our national anthem, and Dean and I will be back with with kickoff. And a tradition of the national anthem, uh, as always here at the stadium, kicked off by the Quincy North Quincy Combined Choir from a few years ago. So nice to have them kick us off. Damien, uh, you got to uh, experience this fall two football season down on the sidelines for, for Quincy High School, uh, doing some coaching there for them. Yeah. Um, talk about that, how it was for, uh, for the coaches and then for the kids. Certainly a different season. Uh, I think at the end of the day, at the end, end of the season, we were just happy that we were able to play. In hindsight, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, And I feel like maybe we should have been able to play in the fall, like the, the real fall. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and like, you know, coming from Rockland and, you know, just talking with other coaches too, it seems that there was a lot of, like, leg injuries just across the state. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel it was partly because the teams were, you know, rushed into play in cold weather and, you know, but I'm just happy that the seniors at least got a game in, you know, if you got more than three, then congratulations. Some schools didn't even get that. Well, yeah, we were talking before we uh, started uh, talking here that, you know, a lot of teams, you know, they were planning for a game on Friday, but then they didn't really know if it was going to happen, and then to get word on Wednesday there'd be no game, and, yeah. you know, trying to see if they could get a game in, uh, and actually that happened to North Quincy a couple times. Um, even even before the season started, they were supposed to play Situate, and that game got canceled um, about a week and a half before the game, and the next week they were supposed to play Pembroke. That game got canceled last minute, and they were able to pick up a game uh, but so it was kind of tough to prepare for this oh, game got a little muff he's down Three technically one. there we go <laughs> uh, yep so uh, kickoff was fielded there by number 20 for Silver Lake Sham Sam Shriekagen and uh, going all the way down at the one yard line and always, uh, I, special teams is always a, at their own like, puts a coach line. on nerves. That's a classic example of, look where you caught that ball, just let it go over your head. Recorded you back know? for the Lakers, number nine, Ben Lobster. I want to apologize to Sam, because I know I'm butchering his last name, so <laughs> I want to apologize to Sam. I know I, against, for Quincy High, I did the same thing as well, so apologize to Sam and his family uh, for that, but. Uh, so tough break there for Silver Lake, but they're going to get going here. Uh, quarterback. Yeah, something wrong with the ball in your own three. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> so um, it's every running back's dream to break like you know ninety a ninety nine yard. yard run. Yeah. yeah. Ben Lofstrom, senior quarterback, three year starter for the Lakers. Lines up under center. He's just gonna keep it himself to try to push it forward. He's gonna sell and some breathing room. He's gonna get a nice gain there. He's gonna get to about uh, the six yard line for Lostrom. Silver Lake likes to mix up a uh, um, a traditional power front and then also spread it out. Um, in the beginning of the season, they they were more you saw like the four or three three. Uh, Three man spread, but then they kind of move towards more of a uh, you know double tight tight end power game. We saw them here just last week, as I mentioned, against the Presidents. Like right now, that looks like the like a victory formation. <laughs> like he's going to kneel the ball. How tight they are! A handoff goes over to the right side, and looks like only about a gain of one. On looks like it was Austin Smith That's on the carry. Tacklers for the Raiders. I think too with this rush season, um, pick up of one. It's you know, Third and three as a former Lakers. official, I'm not knocking them, but they didn't get enough time really to um, to shake their rust off either. So this this whole season was kind of a fly by night operation. <laughs> so third and about have to get four. Yeah, it looks like they actually spotted the ball at the two yard line, not the one, as they initially said. Smith again on the carry over to the right side and like should have enough it. for the yep. first down. Gets all the way up to the 15, so that will move the chains for them. Austin Smith. I'm interested to see. It'll interesting to see if they're going to change their offensive formation now. We were uh, told before the game, uh, again, Ben Lofstrom, the senior quarterback, uh, has a th been a three-year starter for the Lakers, and he holds the uh, school record in passing yards and passing touchdowns, 4,550 passing yards and 42 passing touchdowns for Lofstrom. Again, uh, those are both school records, we were told. So uh, we'll see if North Quincy can keep him at those levels here today for a rate of victory. But uh, So, again, Lofstrom, the uh, school leader in that. Yeah, we were talking too how it surprised surprised me that he holds a record. Not knocking him at Pick at all, five, you know. Congratulations, but you know, I remember the late '90s, Silver Lake having a really good quarterback. My favorite Silver Lake player, John, is number 50. Do you know why? Number 50? No, please tell me. Yeah, why don't you take a look and see if you could? Uh, I'll give you your four quarters to figure it out. <laughs> A little old school in what he wears. <laughs> number 23, Austin Smith. So I'll have to take down number 50's uh, Kimball Coombs for, for Silver Lake you're talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, Rock I just want to make sure. Well, yeah, I'll just, he's rocking a cowboy collar. I used to wear one of those. Oh. I haven't seen those in <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> Third and six for for the those Lakers. watching at home, those were, uh, it's like this big black thing that sticks up under, you know, on the back of your head. It kind of uh, locks your helmet in place. It's supposed to protect against neck injuries, but I think the reason why they banned it and made spearing pretty painless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that see is a, loss a of really tight formation. Jeez. Lost the one on that last play. Lost from looking to pass, and it is it's an incomplete. He got hit from behind. Coming up for the Raiders oh. was Harry Guadiano. Was that a tuck? Uh, I don't think so <laughs> on that time. Uh, this was Guadiano on the hit, and also it looked like it was... Um, let me, let me get the number right there. Colm Geary as well, number 88. That'll bring up fourth and six for the Lakers. 8.28 left to go here in the first quarter. Well, that kickoff benefited North Quincy tremendously. You know, obviously you want to pin somebody back and give them a long field. And, you know, I'll be interested to see if they're going to keep that offense going because they looked super conservative out there. Um, with their backs against the wall, really. All right, got fourth and long for the Lakers, so they'll be forced to kick it away. High kick there for the Lakers. North Quincy's going to let it bounce and takes the Lakers bounce, but it's going to stop just shy of the 49-yard line. So we'll call it the 49, and that's where North Quincy will start this drive. Right at the 52. Yeah. <laughs> And another good, ball. another good for luck right there on special teams from the Silver Lake for uh, for the Raiders. They're on uh, Silver Lake side of the 50 to start their offense. 
And they actually got a spot at right at the 48. The, uh, the quarterback is the number nose 10. of the ball is touching Cooper the 48, Hansen. so that's where we'll put it there. Cooper Hansen, junior quarterback for the Raiders, comes out under center. Sort of like doing a five man front. Uh, oh. Penalty marker. All right, so flags thrown, and it's going to be offsides against, offsides uh, the Lakers. against the Lakers. Now, I didn't think, I don't think that was a hard count. It's, it's, um, some teams do that. A well, five -yard some teams, the, the offensive line First go immediately hands down, Raiders. which I always used to teach my kids to do because I did like to go off set at times. Now they do a ready, set, go, and so on the second sound of the cadence, it, you'll see the offensive line actually get ready. Something they've done all season it has yeah. helped out a couple times with uh, free five yards here and there. Liam Hines, Hines gets a carry the for the Raiders. Nice run there by Hines. By Puts his head down four. and will be the right Lakers at the first down Peterson. marker up to the 38. Should be enough for the first down. Close and it is. Down. And it is a Raider first down. First and ten. Liam first Hines so carried the ball, uh, I think it was 36 line. times last week against Plymouth South for about 150 yards. So it was an uh, outstanding effort uh, by Hines to... <laughs> You know, 30-plus yeah, carries in one, one day is certainly uh, Yeoman's work there. Yeah. And uh, he had a good game against uh, Quincy High as well the week before that. First and 10 now for North. And getting it there is number 28, Thomas Murray, over to the left side. And he'll get a gain of maybe two up to number the 36. Thomas Murray on the carry. To the 36. That's a pickup of two, second and eight. North looks like they're keeping their uh, traditional offense, even though Silver Lake's giving them a five-man front. I, th I feel like that's what most teams will do with a um, you know, power eye like that. You're going to try to put nine in the box. Well, certainly the Lakers know uh, what Hines has been doing the past couple of weeks uh, against, uh, certainly against Plymouth South. So, uh, like I said, you know, stack up the box for a little bit and see what North can do. Hines going to carry over to the left side, and he gets tripped up, but he'll get up to about the 33 on the run. Taken down by number 61, that's Bailey Hooper for the Lakers. It's a big... Big down for uh, Silver Lake. You already, three. you know, started off Third on a bad foot with that um, special teams Raiders. play, and um, you know, couldn't even get it past the 50. Um, how how far back they were pinned. If they can hold North Quincy here, they, you know, the momentum they can feel like they can uh, get some rhythm going. But if they get it, they lose a big chunk of yard. This is uh, they're going to be basically backpedaling to start the first quarter. Third and about five. Murray on the carry. Oh, nice cut back there by Murray over to the left side. Cross over the 25-yard line and picks up the first down. Looked like he might have been stopped at about the 30. But Damon, he saw a hole over to the left side yeah. and went through it and has the first down. One of the best, one of the best reasons uh, why running backs, you always want them to be square to the line of scrimmage. So you can see the field and take that angle left or right when you see daylight. All right, ball is spotted at the 24-yard line. Hines gets it. He gets hit in the backfield, but somehow breaks away from that tackle. Coming yeah. in there for uh, 11, Silver Lake was Ryan Carroll, but he was able to get away was Hines. Cool. And let's Lakers. see where they put him down at the uh, 22. How about gain of three? Up of two, second and eight. Oh no, game of two, yeah. Damien, I think your uh, your favorite player for Silver Lake, Kimball Coombs, was in there on the tackle for that last play. Of course, play. you got a cowboy caller. <laughs> you know you're in on in on the action. 
4.30 left to go here in the first quarter. Pitch over to the right side this time for Hines. Hines taking time to find a hole. Number 11, Ryan Carroll will bring him down this time for the Lakers, but four, Hines gets across Ryan the 20 Carroll up to about the 18-yard line. He's inside the 20. He's going to place that ball at the 18-yard line. Third and... It's a weird uh, for the Raiders. autumn season with instead of leaves falling off there blooming on trees. Uh, yeah, I know. It, <laughs> it really has been weird. I mean, the, uh, the first game of the year that we did here at the stadium, um, it was almost Freezing. like 60 degrees. No, it was yeah. almost like 60 degrees. And it was like, oh, yeah. this is a really nice game. and um, Or maybe it was like 50 degrees. Either way, it was, it was nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, 50 degrees in November, you're like, oh, this is freezing. But, you know, in April, it was, it was nice. Or actually, at that point, it was March. Uh, so it was nice. Our handoff goes number 22 this time, Hunter McIsaac. And McIsaac will get up to the 15-yard line. And he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. I think this is go for a territory. I wouldn't be surprised if Silver Lake starts uh, closing in there. Their, their five-man front is pretty spread. I wouldn't be surprised if they start pinching them in. Some big boys on the North Quincy line. All right, fourth and... Fourth and one, North is going to go for it. Three minutes to go now here in the first quarter. Eye formation with Thomas Murray and Hunter McIsaac is the eye back. Uh, and North is going to most likely get called for the penalty here. Silver Lake is a very uh, junior heavy team. I remember them a few years ago. They had uh, um, spoke very highly of their freshmen a few years ago. Um, it's a good core, that I guess, that came up through youth. I'm, I'm curious. I wonder if Silver Lake youth football is Silver Lake or all the towns that make it up. I don't know. You know? Maybe you should know, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe here at the half, we'll have to do some research to yeah. uh, look up uh, the towns down there for Silver Lake Regional How High School. How many towns are in, in that region? Three. Three? Being used, told. And they used to be Pembroke. Yeah, and Pembroke broke off a few years ago. Pembroke seceded from Silver Lake. <laughs> All right, and timeout's going to be called down the field by North Quincy. Timeout. North Head Quincy. coach Ryan Craig saw something and didn't like what he saw, so he calls timeout. That's the first timeout of I the half. I still I don't think that that was one of those uh, things of trying to draw them offside and call a timeout and punt or kick a field goal. I, I bet they'll still go for it. you got to gamble sometimes, John. Well, if they... Um, if they wanted to kick it here, it would be, let's see, 37-yard field goal. So that's a decent kick. With the wind. So, yeah, go for it. I know Thomas Murray, their kicker, um, probably could put that up pretty easily. But, uh, like I said, I think they're down there looking to get six points here on this just drive. Silver Lake's kicker is actually pretty good. He cleared the, um, the Jumbotron. The other week, yeah, yeah, it went certainly well into the bus yard so there. Any, and I don't know if that ball came back or not. Yeah, but. any <laughs> any kids, you know, looking for some footballs, you can go behind the jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> Probably find. I think there's about three that are back there. Let's check for bugs after. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. When you get back <laughs> that area. All right, fourth and six now for the Raiders. Play action fake. Oh, you got to get that Rolling out, outside. looking down the middle of the field, and oh, that was touchdown. I wouldn't North think that Quincy. was clean offensive football. <laughs> Brendan Hines gets the touchdown pass there. Touchdown Raiders. And uh, Hines he kind of pushed off, but, you know, he didn't call it. They don't call a lot of that stuff in high school. Um, we'll probably see it on the replay. It was a nice job there by Hines to get into the end zone. He uh, made a nice cut and was able to get away. 
So uh, 152 left to go here in the first, and Raiders jump on the board first. Problem with the secondary, right? It's, uh, you know, always watch your man, not the ball. Especially when that quarterback starts to roll. They'll always find some separation. All right, Murray with the extra point attempt is good. So, again, with 152 left to go here in the first quarter, North Quincy jumps on top by a score of 7 to nothing. Like one through 50, and yeah. then a lineman has to be 51 or 60 through 70 or something like that, or 60 through 79. Well, that's the thing. So now they're saying, you know, like a, a linebacker can be 24, you know. And right. So now if he's standing out there, is he a safety, is he a corner, is he a linebacker? I think you should be able to physically tell the difference. But, I mean, look at high school and college. It's like that anyway. I don't – if a high school kid can figure it out, I think Tom Brady can. I don't know what he's so mad about. Well, what I, what I didn't understand about that, too, is, you know, you know, if, if the linebacker, like I said, is number 21 and he's lined up at middle linebacker before the call, yeah. Brady's going to call out, you know, the mic is 21, yeah. and then that sets it up for everybody else. Um, so whether it's 21, 51, or 71, or, or 1, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I wasn't too sure about that as well, but... Um, Maybe Tom's just a traditionalist when it comes to numbering <laughs> in the NFL. All right, Murray getting ready to kick it away for North Quincy. Oh, wind, oh man. wind took it down. Interference by the wind. So we're apparently getting a nor'easter um, Sunday, which is what this wind is coming in from. Interesting uh, kick return for Silver Lake. 3-2, three. Two, three for the first two, three lines. All right, Sam Shirkjian is back for the Lakers and feels this one cleaning at his own six yard line. And nice cut over to the left side and another nice move there, but finally, the right defense brings him up and brings him down at about the 32. We'll see where they spot it down. We'll place the ball at the 32-yard line, first and 10 Lakers. And so they do spot the ball at the 32. Let's see how uh, Silver Lake comes out. Now, as opposed to uh, you know being backed up in their own end zone, it's a lost series. And you know now now the pressure's on them. They got to answer back. Well, they do come out now with a four receiver set. Send a man in motion. That's that number sweet. two, Geo Hendrickson. It slipped. And looks like he'll get number back two, to the Gio line. Actually, no, they're gonna say it's a loss of one. As you say, he slips and he'll get brought down at the 31 yard line. Down at the 31. That's a really the difficult. The jet sweep point. became really popular again over the past few years. That's a really difficult. Um, you know, you, you're, you're supposed to run as much as you can to the sideline for that. Um, but kids just always want to cut up, and it takes like a really special athlete to make that like 90 degree cut at full speed. Especially on the, f the field turf, it can be very slippery out there oh, as yeah. well. Our handoff goes to Austin Smith, number 23. Smith over to the right side. We'll get up to the 35, number maybe the 36. The That's carry. a generous spot, but yeah. And they will give him up the 36-yard line. Number, eight, number 88, call Gary on the tackle. Under a minute to go here in the quarter. Pick up a four. The third and six for the Lakers. 
Get me on a four man spread. Looks like this will be the last play of the quarter. Lostrom looking to pass. Looking, looking, and he'll have to run it instead. Oh, and I think nice run that, there by yeah. Lostrom. And Lostrom will get all the way up to the 45 yard line and I'll move the chains for the Lakers. Number 88, Carl Gary at the bottom of the pile, but the result of that run is going to be... Great uh, great move of the, the officials by ending the quarter on the big line. Always easier line. to switch to chains that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not 100% sure I like or dislike uh, that um, that the, the new the formation the for the officials that they did this seven. year instead of having, you know, zero. an ump and a back judge. I said, do you want to talk more about it? Cause I... I just, um, I don't know if many people have noticed it. I don't know if I've so, noticed it. I, mean, so, I probably have, but... Yeah, so traditionally you would have an umpire um, who stands... The umpire is kind of like, you know, second in command, uh, mi mirrors the referee. You know, if the referee is, depending on the quarterback, being a righty or a lefty, he's behind the quarterback at an angle. And the umpire is the opposite of the referee. And um, behind him is the back judge, and I... I personally think it's probably because it's hard to find back judges. You know, it's a lot of running all game. Um, some of these gentlemen are retired <laughs> and don't exactly aren't exactly as fast as these young young fellows on the field. But um, yeah, so the the umpire. So obviously the ref watches the quarterback and the running backs, and the umpire starts from the center and works their way down the line for holding and you know chop blocks and whatnot. And I almost feel like not having somebody there is um, like more line penalties may have been, you know, gotten away with this year. A little, little extra holding, Number 20, about one yard gain. Austin Smith. And Austin Smith on the carry there for a gain of one. Taken down by number 79, Harry Gaudiano. That's a pickup of one yard, second and nine for the Lakers. That was also part of that, you know, the the umpire used to be behind, like, the linebackers yeah. on defense as well. So it was to try, try to make sure they weren't getting in, in danger anymore. Because, you know, the NFL, the umpire is now uh, on the opposite side of the quarterback as well. Pass down oh. field and incomplete. Lost him through a nice ball there. Intended for number 20, Sam Sariki. Yeah, that was a uh, good call. Testing out North Quincy. Six, Grant Murphy, Secondary over there. For the Raiders. We'll bring up third and nine. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you can always always <laughs> use the umpire to set a pick too for a tight end, <laughs> which was a common common thing. I mean, NFL wise, Wes Welker used to love to do that uh, for the slot guys. But um, yeah, you know, you could say it's dangerous, but most guys aren't forced to be an umpire. They're comfortable being there. They're usually the ones that are setting the ball down. Um, the ref is continuing to like look, you know, scan the field and keep the tempo of the game going. Right now the the ref, you know, like right there just set the ball down. Third and nine now for the Lakers. Of trips. Lost from looking to pass over Look to the left side and it's incomplete. Late flag comes in as well. Might be a port of they might consider that late hit on the QB. There is a penalty marker. Referee is talking to the North no, Quincy coach. I think it's Looks gonna, like it's gonna be, be a hold. A, a a cup lock. So it was a chop block there, and North Quincy's going to decline oh, it. So I it. think that was a cut and not a chop. Cut, excuse me. <laughs> like, I know, but they call. I know they called it a chop block. <laughs> well, is there two, are there two different signals for a cut and chop block? Yeah. So, okay. so well, the chop block. Is a 15 yard, um, that's like a major infraction. It's one guy holds up, one guy goes low. As they were dropping back in pass coverage, I think, I think they limit where you can. So if you can cut block now immediately on the snap, but you can't, like, like you can't, you know, take that step back and pass that's block the and then cut. The Lakers, and that's what happened. So it wasn't a chop. He cut him, but, the, you know, it said chop block. Everybody kind of messes those up. Two very different things. Nice kick here by Silver Lake. 
The guy's going to feel oh. at his own 12-yard line and had a little stumble there trying to catch his feet, and that allowed Silver Lake to come down there. Looked like leading the way was John Dickinson for the Silver Lake Lakers. Also over there was Kyle Neal. Turf looks slippery today. It's about the third time that's happened. See, the turf is slippery or it's towards the end of the season. Everybody needs new cleats. <laughs> First and ten uh, they swat the ball at the 13-yard line for McIsaac. Well, that's, excuse me, that's where McIsaac was able to bring it back to. 10.57 left to go here in the uh, second quarter. Again, Cooper Hanson under center for the Raiders. And up goes to Thomas Murray. Nice run by Thomas Murray over to the left side, crosses the 25 yard line, and finally it will get brought out of bounds. Thomas and Murray. a late flag as well. Looks like going to say it's a two, unnecessary the roughness the for uh, out of bounds the there. Marcus. And they're going to spot him out of bounds at, let's see what they, at the 28. Yeah, personal foul, personal so 15 foul yards of that. Against the Lakers, 15 yards. Well, now that kid can't have another one of those, according to the uh, Federation rules. That'll bring the ball out to the 43-yard line of North Quincy. Result of that play is a Raider first down. All right, so a... Uh, First down and tack 15 more onto it for North Quincy and the ball goes all the way up to the 43 yard line. And that's something we've seen too if you have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, you only get, you get a warning and then you're out of the game. Yeah. And that's across all, you know, NFL, all, high, college, yeah. high school. The college now has the, um, at halftime they can, they can, um, Review Taking film and actually give you a, a personal foul like later after the like, yeah after the after the half. The pickup of two yards. I believe that's only Second like eight. you know the high end colleges. I don't think like uh, um, you know any D three schools are doing that. Yes, yeah, yeah, just going back and look at the replay of yeah. it. Like, yeah, for. Thomas Murray on the carry that last play for North Quincy with a two yard gain. Ooh, caught him on the hard count. It'll be marked around the play. The five man front's probably giving um, you know, some of these DNs a hard time. They're just a little bit further away from the ball than they used to. They'll bring the ball to midfield. Second and three for the Raiders. So I think Quincy should have a contest to uh, what what to replace the uh, Quincy Cannon signs with. <laughs> <laughs> See what they can put up there. I'm sure the cannons. I'm sure they don't mind having the cannons name up there since they put so much money into the stadium. It's, it's yeah. a great stadium. Wow, great move oh. there by Liam Hines. Spins out of the tackle. Oh, once again, slipping. And again tripped up there. Yeah. Couldn't catch his feet Liam when he came out of that spin. But great job there by line. Liam Hines. Gets across the 35 up to the 33 yard line. Always keep moving. Always down keep moving your feet, contact. young Results folks at home watching. A Raider first down. Ball replaced at the also, always wrap line. up. Oh, <laughs> See it through the end, or else that happens. Well, that's one thing we've seen. You talk about you know keeping your feet moving. Hines has been a great job doing that this year for the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, you know he'll go into the pile, keep his feet moving, and all of a sudden he's breaking free just like that. Uh, or you know he'll find a little bit of a seam or a hole, and he can escape through it. Uh, he's had some big runs like that for North Quincy this year, and uh, just right there was able to break a tackle, and they did a nice spin move, and a big gain there for Liam Hines. It's a 17 yard gain and a first down into Silver Lake territory. 8.40 left to go here in the uh, second quarter. Looking to set up a screen pass it looks like and 
No, oh, going down. Oh. No, we just, yeah, kind of just get rid of it. Yeah, he was looking downfield for Tyler Lee, but he had a couple of people chasing him. Uh, and when I say him, Cooper Hansen was trying to just get out of harm's way. Number 20 for the Lakers, that's Sam Sharikian. Second and 10. Second down now for North Quincy. North on top seven, nothing. I'm curious if the uh, Shriners All Star game is going to happen this year. I haven't heard anything about that. I'm not too sure. It would be nice at least if they name, you know, I'm the sure players if they don't have a game. Yeah, 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 I'm sure they'll do that at least. Hines on the carry up the middle, and again, keeping his feet moving. And Tough tackle there by Hines, and they're going to spot him yeah. down at the 20. Let's see where they spot the ball. The 27, it looks like. Taken down by number 71 for the Lakers, Ben Carroll. Well, actually, I believe Monday is uh, the beginning of the spring season, it so, is. Yeah. so they won't even really be able to play uh, um, a game like that. Well, the Raiders. Who Time knows how they'll do that, but yeah, it's well, such it's usually a quick in the summer, but yeah, but even the spring season goes to July 3rd this year. Yeah, yep. which is, um, yeah, it's also you know talking to some other spring coaches is a nightmare for them because you already have kids saying, oh, but we're going to Disneyland, the, you know, like the last week of June, and and uh, spring could potentially have state tournaments. Yep. So yep. you know, it's the last thing you need is you know having a baseball or softball game and. Half your team's, you know, at Lake Winnipesaukee because parents <laughs> <left> it. <laughs> They're dipping their toes in the pool while, uh, you know, you're trying to pull up the JVs to make a feel the championship team. Well, I know that was an, even an issue for, um, for uh, Christmas vacation and February vacation this yeah. year for the teams too. You know, they um, weren't sure if there was going to be a season at all, or you know, if, how they were going to play, or they might have been told they were going to have the, uh, the the break off. So you, they, you know, they had scheduled vacations and then. Because of delays or cancellations and postponements, they end up having some games. Well, you know, you know what's interesting? They're actually going to allow wrestling now in the spring. Oh, are they? I, I now, that. Okay. now that's going to be. So, you know, now what if you're a, uh, you know, you know, your your stud wrestler is also your stud tennis player. Now, or or baseball player. Yeah, you know, now yep. the kid has to like the now the kid has to choose, and it's just. Um, you know, I, I get it with I get it with wrestling. You know, that it's it is what it is. It's you know, there's no social distancing. In right, that right, sport. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, literally no. <laughs> literally, the, the, the whole sport is you know to make contact with the entire time. Um, and I appreciate that that they were allowed to work out, and you know, and a lot of the kids still did, like seniors, like they were jogging and lifting weights. You know, for no matches, but um, you know, so I'm glad that some of them can play. But it, it just really stinks of you know, yeah, like you said. Oh, ball comes loose in the play. Might have been down by contact. Let's see what they. Silver Lake thinks they have it. We'll see. No sign yet. Hines is down the field with the ball, and Silver Lake has yep. recovered it. The Silver Lake ball recovered by number 20. Head coach Ryan Craig's on the field. He's saying that. He was down as well, and looks like they're going to spot him down at the 18-yard line. The ball was recovered at the 23-yard line. I mean, best best scenario for that, the, whoever saw that ball should have came in screaming official-wise. And, you know, either give, like, you know, turnover, throw that blue bag that they have, or signal, you know, third down or, or fourth down, whatever that was. Um kind of stinks if, like, you know, you don't really know what happened. Ooh, a little Washam keeps himself, has a big read. hole up the middle of the field, and finally gets tripped up there. He's trying to avoid one of his own men over to the left side, but a big run by Lostrom up to the 45. Did a really good job doing that, uh, that classic Oregon offense. Read the DN and pull that ball back and go. Result of that play is a Laker first down. Coming up on seven minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the quarter. So last time they had this play, they had a deep run. Ball gets tipped. 
Colm Geary got his hand up there for North Quincy to tip that ball down. Incomplete. Curious if uh, they're going to take another shot down the field again. They were in the same uh, same boat last time they were in this part of the field. Oh, zone read and gave it. Number 23. Yeah, Austin four. Smith gets Three it. Half. Smith, a uh, junior for the Lakers. Had a good game against Little the Presidents and gets up to the, about the 48. The pickup of two. Now, why are they called the Lakers and not the Silver Lakers? <laughs> Wouldn't it be kind of redundant to be the Silver Lake, Silver Lake? Lakers? No, I guess so, but the Ar like Arlington are the Spy Ponders because Arlington High is on Spy Pond. Yeah. So... You know, they, they could be. It could be any lake. They could be playing for Lake Michigan, for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be specific. Yeah, the Silver Lake, Silver Lakers. Redundancy at its best. Yeah. Oh, the Quincy, uh, right at the end, looks like he's in the neutral zone, but maybe that's just from my angle. Lost from looking to pass. Quick little pass up the middle of the field. It's complete. Number 88, Tommy Olsen on the reception and a big play there. Another slip on the field. Uh, one of the defensive backs on North Quincy, they had a good angle at that. Just, just the turf took him out. Time out for water. So Olsen will get up to the 39 yard line with 6.13 left to go and is a timeout on the field. It's a water break timeout. So little known fact, John, the state of Arizona has a um, running water break. So every X amount of minutes, there has to be a water break, you know, because they played 100 say it's, degrees. It's a little warm out there. <laughs> so what's crazy, and, it, and I guess it happens, is the team could have a timeout, and the timeout ends, and there's an immediate water. Like, it's, it's, it's a separate running clock okay. than, than the game clock. So, you know, a team comes in a timeout, Timeout's over, and then eh, the water break um, goes off. Um, or they're in a timeout, and eh, oh, now you have to have a water break while you're in here too. Um, so is it just like every 20 it's minutes a, or 15 minutes, whatever it I might think be? It's like, I think it's every eight minutes. Okay. Um, huh. But yeah, it's a state. It's it's one of the the added state rules for that. Just totally understandable. Also, only state that has a dome high school team. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think like uh, one of out by Tucson. How they afforded that, I have no idea. <laughs> Austin Smith on the carry, and he'll get stopped in the backfield. Thomas Murray comes up and Number makes a great play, and, and it'll be a loss of one on the play. Smith like down by number 28, Thomas Murray. Getting a good penetration, that run blitz. It's a loss of one on the play. Second and 11. All right, ball back to the 40 now for the Lakers. You know, it's funny, you talk about some of the different states that, you know, where high school football is, is huge and big. Um, you know, this is a pretty nice stadium where kids in Massachusetts can play right now. Uh, but, you know, this would be a tiny little field if you went to Texas or yeah. Florida or some different places like that where, you know, some places in Texas have, you know, a you know, 20,000 seat stadium for high school football. Lost from rolling out to his left and sticks his hand up to get a couple extra yards. We'll see where they spot him uh, out of bounds. Like, looks like they gave it to him. And yeah, he gets out of bounds at the 29 yard line and it'll be a first down. It's where that ball was, not where his foot landed. <laughs> Every now and then those zebras forget that. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the head football coach of IMG in Florida, I don't know if you're familiar with that, that school. It's like the equivalent of the ISL league, okay, but in Florida, and it's IMG Academy, and it's it's where the WNBA held their <laughs> the rest of their season because that's the type of facility it has. Jeez, um, their head their head football coach left. Austin Smith over the left side Agreed. breaks free, crosses the 15 yard line, and will finally get held up at about the 11, where he's brought down by a number of Raiders. Well, Silver so, so Lake looks like they're starting to get uh, get their rhythm yeah, going. So, with Quincy's got to step up or make some adjustments on this now, especially with that um, the read option that they're running. 
seems to be working for them. But yeah, so the head coach left to go to a public high school just outside of San Antonio in Texas. Not like a not like a private school, <laughs> a regular like the equivalent of you know Quincy, a public city. Yep. So gosh knows how much that guy just made. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time will call down the field by the Raiders with 5.03 left to go here in the quarter. Yeah, I know it's it's amazing just like how how different that the sport is in, you know, different states. And, yeah. You know, football is pretty big here. Uh, yeah. But it's, you know, it, it's nothing like it is down south um, or even probably in places in Pennsylvania or Ohio where it's, you know, much unbelievable. But, you know, you know hockey here. Is, yeah. is huge. And, you know, you get some really great hockey in Massachusetts um, uh, and then the northern states. So it kind of goes back and forth. Might not get as many people in the stands, whereas, you know, southern football might. But, yeah. um, you know, you know uh, some of the teams, you know, CM or BC or Malton Catholic, H Hingham, um, and there's a, um, a team on the North Shore I'm forgetting for hockey. That's uh, St. Joe's Prep. Uh, well, up at the public school. I'm Redding. thinking of the – yeah, Redding's good. Um so, yeah, they're always, you know, up there, some of the, you know, best hockey uh, in the country here. No, no, Massachusetts is definitely, definitely a hotbed, for, actually for hockey and lacrosse, both boys and girls. Um, a lot of collegiate lacrosse players come out of Massachusetts. All right, so Austin Smith on the carry, gets hit at the line of scrimmage, but is able to fight his way forward up for maybe a gain of oh. two up to the ten. So I thought it would be less, but Austin generous Smith spot. On the carry. To the 10. So speaking of which, of the, with those elite teams, they're banning um, all uh, Super 8 tournaments until 2025. Yeah, I heard that, that they're going to be holding off baseball. on those. Now, I really think, that, I think the baseball one is really cool because it has its, it has specific rules, like it tweaks, like, like you can't use aluminum bats. Oh, it's a baseball. Yeah, it's like it's. I think it like. Or, uh, wood. Yeah, <laughs> like real baseball, but yeah, that's yeah. So, okay. Is it nine innings too for uh, Super Eight? I think so. Yeah, so they play like real games, and I think it's like really cool. Um, Smith on the carry up the middle of the field falls forward, but gets up to about the five yard line. Austin Smith. Go guys, hold up. Um, what was the reasoning behind putting the the hold on them? Um. There was a bunch. They were like saying um, fairness and stuff like that, and it's, it's kind of like almost. It really is kind of like an arbitrary method of picking the teams. It's yeah. Let's be real though. Everybody knows, you know, right, right. The stud teams. So that I think they want to have more black and white on paper. What determines, um, you know, your team. I look back at my alma mater with hockey, and they had that long run. As you know, half the kids were like sophomores and already college committed, so they were they were like a shoe in. Um, Malton Catholic being yeah. your, your alma mater. Smith on the carry over to the left side and spins into the Got end zone it. for a touchdown. Number he spun it about the two or three yard yeah. line, and that picked him up touchdown and uh, sprung Lakers. him free. Yeah, pressing that X button on the way in. <laughs> 319 remaining in the half. The Lakers are on the board. So it'll be interesting to see what the state tournaments for baseball and hockey would look like now with um with um you know not having a super eight. I always thought that lacrosse the should have a super eight. Because um you look at like a team like Cohasset and Norwell being in D three, but they basically could hang with some premium Division One schools. Kick and over the good. net. <laughs> uh, kick is up and good for Silver Lake. So with 319 left to go in the second quarter, Silver Lake puts seven points on board to tie it up with North Quincy. You know, you mentioned um, Cohasset and uh, Norwell. Norwell, but then, you know, right that Hillsdale area, you know, Hingham and Duxbury are two of the also, unbelievable yeah, lacrosse teams really as well. Teams. Yeah, you know, I can see... Cohasset is filthy with lacrosse, though. It's like, like, I mean... For a team that can compete with BC High and St. John's Prep as a public school like that, if, if for a small school, it's pretty impressive. We'll I mean, be thinking with the uh, the Super Eight uh, tournament, you know, especially with hockey. You would think, all right, well now we're going to put B 
BC, Hingham, and you know another team into the South Division One bracket. Yeah, and that's gonna make it you know, certainly a lot tougher for a lot oh, of those yeah. other teams in Division One to you say, all right, now we're gonna have oh, a, so, to no, do it. And then no. same thing on the North Shore with you know, uh, C actually CM's on the on the South Shore for uh, Division yeah. One, but you know, um, you know MC or the Andover or Reading. Yeah, no doubt. Like those super eights for baseball and and hockey probably relieved a lot of people. <laughs> like right, right, right. Though they did have that thing where there was, then they put a play in, and then the last team has to then go back to regulate it to their regular division tournament. Yes, yeah. All right, line drive kick. on that bouncing catch. Yeah, McIsaac feels it as about well his 10-yard line. Breaks free. Nice hole there by Hunter McIsaac. Over to the right side. Crosses midfield. Breaks a tackle and just stumbles out of bounds Great at return. about the 45-yard line. Make it the 44. Special teams has really been uh, hurting so late like this game. Hunter McIsaac run inside the 45-yard line of the Lakers. McIsaac took that ball just inside his 10-yard line and... Again, they're going to mark him at about the 44. Ball be placed at the 44-yard line. Next year for football, there's going to be a lot of new uh, teams and mixed around in divisions, too. Um, I think actually North Quincy's moving up. To Division Two. Yeah. Um, some some good teams are moving, like Rockland's moving down a division. Um, basically means now D7 is gonna be between. Oh, Liam Hines breaks free. He's gonna try to go all the way to distance. 10-5 and just gets brought down from behind at the one yard line. Look how Gio Hendrickson came up there to make the tackle hey, as I, well as... I'm, I'm calling I'm number five, Tyler Lee, was the one that really sprung him for North Quincy there. Good stock blocking all the way downfield. Goal to go for North Quincy. So Hines all the way down to the one. Under two and a half minutes to play now here in the quarter. Actually, spot him down at the two-yard line. Give it to Hines up the middle of the field. Touchdown, North Quincy. 11. Hines punches it in from two yards out to finish off the drive for North. Raider. Yeah, nothing fancy with those plays. Just straight up the middle. Hit the guy in front of you wearing a white shirt. So North Quincy comes right back and answers that drive by the Lakers, uh, set up by the return by Hunter McIsaac, and two plays later from Liam Hines, the big run and then the touchdown run. And Thomas Murray will attempt the extra point, kick is up, and let's see, it is good. Lakers almost got in there to block it, but Murray was able to get it off just in time for the extra point. And the team's head up Duxbury is also uh, moving up 14, to Division Two for next sauce? year. Another uh, Patriot League team. I'm sorry, you said Duxbury was moving up? Up, uh, yeah, from D3 to D2. So funny too. So so many teams that are moving up aren't happy. Like nobody wants to move up, you know. Right, right. Because of the competition, though. Um, so it's like really weird how the state is set up. That you look like there's some really, like, like um, you know, D1 and D2 has like some really stiff competition statewide. But it's like a handful of teams, and then you have teams that make the playoffs with losing records. Um, also. Well, I know it's one those, thing they were those trying high to high divisions. Yeah. That was one thing they wanted to try to see if they could, you know, correct with the uh, with the eight teams making the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you might get that that number one seed, that seven and zero oh against the the three and four number eight seed. And yeah. I think there's actually more competition in the lower divisions than there are in the upper ones. Like 
You could feasibly probably have like a 14 playoff if you go by record. All right, Murray getting ready to kick it away for North Quincy. Live drive kick. kick. And they're going to be fielded by oh. the Lakers at their own 20 yard line. Ball still loose. They finally That's pick it up. And coming down there quickly was Brian oh, Rodriguez. Oh, it like. oh, we got some. No flag, though. A little, little aggression on the by the 35 yard line. Special teams have, have not been working out well for Silver Lake today. Laker ball, first and 10 at their own 23 yard line. They might be uh, not be used to playing on a turf field. I know Silver Lake has that uh, some old school grass down there. Zach Burlow on the return for the Lakers, and they're going to spot him down at the 23. Be surprised if so, like just tries to go for it now. Deep downfield. Yeah. Lofstrom looking to pass and a oh, nice oh. pass to by Lofstrom, but oh, a great caught, tackle caught there right by number 34, Michael Gorman for the Raiders. Austin Smith. Taken down by number 34, Mike Gorman. And got to spot the ball back at the 20 yard line. So a loss of three on the play. On the play, second and 13. Oh, big blitz coming. And another sack there, or a sack, I should say. Ball is loose. And ball is loose as well. We'll see what they say. Oh, it's down. Spot the ball back at the 15 yard line. And it's just a loss by number nine, Lofgren. They maintain possession. The ball is placed at the 15. Looks like it was um, Brendan Baker who came in to make the sack. Third and 18 for the Lakers. You know, it looked like they, they were just doing man on those receivers and blitzed everyone else. The QB had, to, uh, had very little time to uh, get rid of the ball. Under a minute to go here in the first half, 45 seconds left. It's third and long for the Lakers. Looked in trying to just bleed some time off the clock here. Austin Smith on the carry, and he's hit and brought down immediately there. Number 23, Austin Smith. And down, North Quincy is going to call a timeout. Try to save some clock. The clock is still running. <laughs> Oof. The 14 seconds ran off that. I see, I know that there was definitely about 30 or 31 seconds left when the uh, timeout was called. So we'll see where they put some, if they put some time back on. Austin Smith on the carry for the Lakers in that last play, and they're going to say he's down at the 13-yard line for a loss of two on the play. I, mean, I don't blame him at the rate that their special teams have been going. I'd like to get one more shot at a punt return against them. And they're going to say 32 seconds should remain on the clock. Two returners. Back to punt for the Lakers. Definitely looking to try to make something happen on this. Oh, oh nice kick there by Silver Good Lake. Punt. A booming yeah. kick. It's going to go all the way back to the North Quincy 33 yard line where it goes out of bounds. Wow, great kick there Divine by JJ Devine for the Lakers. It's the 33 yard line of North Quincy. That was a 52-yard punt from the line of scrimmage. All right, so they do mark it down at the 33-yard line. And there's 23 seconds left to go in the half. See what North Quincy can do here. They have one timeout remaining. 
I should know they had no timeouts remaining. Field goal. <laughs> <laughs> Let that wind pick up and pretend like you're in hull. All right, Cooper Hansen. And he's going to nope. get, oh, I was going to say he gets sacked, but the second effort will sack Hansen there. And he'll get brought back to the 26 yard line. Looks like that was going to be a play action. I think that's. Uh, on the yeah, that looks like it's going to be half. Yeah, that, everyone's yep. walking Silver off. Lake's going to let the clock run out, and that is the half here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. 14-7, good game so far. All right, so uh, like I said, Damien, has been a good game here at the stadium. Both teams playing well. Uh, so North Quincy leads 14 to 7 over Silver Lake. Damon and I will take a quick timeout for half. And in about 10 minutes, we'll be back with more live coverage here on QA TV Sports. We hope you stay tuned. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Memorial Stadium. Again, we're at the half. The North Quincy Raiders lead the Silver Lake Lakers by a score of 14-7. to Real quick, we'll run down some stats. Leading the way for North Quincy is quarterback, uh, uh, excuse me, running back Liam Hines. He has nine rushes for 85 yards and a touchdown as well. Brendan Hines, his brother, has one reception for 20 yards and a touchdown. Cooper Hansen is one of two passing for that one touchdown pass. For Silver Lake, Ben Lostrom, two of six passing for 10 yards. Lostrom also has four rushes for 48 yards rushing. Austin Smith, three attempts, excuse me, 13 attempts for 47 yards. And Tommy Olson, one reception for 13 yards for the Lakers. So again, 14 to 7 as the teams come back out onto the field to get underway. North Quincy won the opening coin toss and elected to the further option to the second half, so they'll be hey, we're getting the first drive here for the second half. For the Lakers, number 37, JJ. Oh, we got a minute. I want to thank Ryan McWade, who's up on camera for us here tonight, doing a great job as always. You can always rely on QA TV for quality, John. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Damian. So interesting setup where the Silver Lake guys are. I'm wondering if they're about if they're going to do an onside. Um, they're right there at the line of scrimmage. Yep. Yeah, nice job there by North Quincy. Make sure the number it was number 56 there, Dylan Clifford. That's Dylan Clifford. Tough way to. Recover those ground balls, Dean Bean, as the ball's going every which way. And yeah. Clifford did a great job to, uh, to reel that in. All you hope is for those guys in front not to try to be a hero, John. <laughs> every coach wants to fall down on it. You know, when somebody with a number like 50 sees the ball coming, they're thinking the end zone. But he did the right thing and just fell on it. Well, certainly the first thing is to field it cleanly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's oh, always no, the number one thinking, thing. I'm picking this thing up and I'm going <laughs> to no, be in I... the paper tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so North starts at midfield to begin the third quarter. And Silver Lake is going to jump off sides again. Off sides against the Lakers. Now, here's the interesting thing there. The North Quincy side, you know, called, and that was a late flag. He never crossed the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he also didn't make any contact or caused any of them to, to jump. So, it was uh, maybe a little home cooking on that end. <laughs> <laughs> well, North Quincy will take it. All right, so first and five for the Raiders. Thomas Murray on the carry. Nice delay there, trying to find oh, some space. Right, right up the middle. And he'll get up to, we'll see, see, they spot him down at the 40. We'll see if they oh, give him wow. the first down huh. or not. And they're going to say just shy of the 40-yard line. So gain of four on the play for Murray. Four and a half. Second and less than a yard. Oh, 
Play action pass. Catch him sleeping right now. Ooh. Let's see what Cooper Hansen nope. has cooking. No, he's going <laughs> to give it to Liam Hines. Might as well give it to the work. Uh, so yeah, give it to him, and they pick up their first down. Hines gets up to the 38-yard line. The Silver Lake has that safety up really close. Oh. It's like teasing you to throw it deep. result of that play is... Hey, Raider, first down. The 38-yard line of Silver Lake. Well, we'll see what uh, Matt McNamara and Martin Dunham, the uh, co-offensive coordinators, see what they get something lined up here, see if they've seen that as well. So the Silver Lake safety is only about eight yards deep. Lee goes in motion, and they got to pitch it to the left for Hines. Hines, nice job. They had to cut up the field, finds the hole, and it'll be right at the first down mark. We'll see if they give it to him. Might be just shy. Down by number 50, Kimball Coombs. Kimball Coombs on the tackle for you, Damian. And they're going to say a nine yard gain for Hines up to the 29 yard line. That was a good toss. The uh, Silver Lake, you got to step up when you see that. A lot of them are sitting there waiting. If you if you wait on that toss, all that power's coming at you. If you don't come up and meet it, you're only going to get pushed back. Hand off to Thomas Murray in the fullback position, and he'll uh, have the first down. Looks like he's, he's got it, yeah. Number 28, Thomas and Murray. Needs to get to the 28, and he's at the 27. For the Lakers. Result of that play is a Raider first down. Actually, going to mark him down at the 26-yard line. Does North Quincy have a band, John? Uh, it's a Quincy-North Quincy combined band, yes. Okay. Yep. So basically every home game there, they're there. Yep. Type deal. Yep. Yeah, usually every Friday night, the uh, the band's at the uh, first few rows of the 40-45-yard uh, 40 to 45-yard line. Unfortunately, not here for this fall two season. Good cut back. Try to gain something. Yeah, Hines had a nice stutter step, as you said, in the backfield. Cut to his right. Gets across to 25, and they mark him down at the 24. They call a pickup of two. Second and eight for the Raiders. Clock ticks under nine minutes to go here in the third quarter with that last play. Hines again in the carry, right up the middle of the field. Yeah, this ISO up the middle. I think this is setting up a play action. Taken down by your host of tacklers. We'll mention number 34, Eddie Sigliano. And they're going to see the spot him down at the 22 yard line. Gain of two on the play there for Liam Hines. It's important, important down for Silver Lake here. They uh, give up a first down here. They're, you know, North Quincy will be knocking on the door again. I'll be in a deeper hole. So we'll see if they step up and, uh, you know, obviously North Quincy, you want to drive that nail in right now. Hines over 100 yards rushing now, Damian, with that last play. 101 yards for Liam Hines. Hey, keep feeding him <laughs> if it works. Here you go, play action fake. Hanson rolling out to his right, fires a bullet. It's intercepted by Silver Lake. Coming up on the tackle, excuse me, on the interception was number 28 for Silver Lake. And that is Aiden Winslow. Good reaction by uh, Winslow. It is Laker ball first and 10 from their own 29. Winslow brings it back to the 29 yard line. So. He was ready for the play action fake there, Damian. So nice play by Aiden Winslow with 7.37 left to go here in the third quarter. Silver Lake will take over. North is going now to a five-man front. Austin Smith on the carry. Flag thrown on the play. Now what's Austin happening Smith. here? There is a flag on the play. Oh. 
Smith got up to the 33-yard line. Looks like a hold. Holding against the Lakers. Yeah, let's see, the flag's at the 29-yard line, so move that back to the 19. And I'll bring up now a first and 20 for the Lakers. The ball on the 19-yard line. No replay on that on the Jumbotron. Don't think so, no. <laughs> That'll bring up first and 20 for the Lakers. Eesh. It's just, you know, that middle, that hold in the middle is the, is, is the umpire's category, man. That's their... Uh, that's what they're, they're seeing. It's uh, as a former head linesman, it, it will be hard to make a call like that. Oh, well, big there play there go. by number 66 for North Quincy. Brandon Baker just met Austin Smith and pushed him back for a loss of play. I should say it's no game, but a great play, great play there by Baker. That's how you fill a gap. That's Brandon Baker. Loss of one. Baker, a uh, junior for the Raiders, so he'll be back in the fall. About 2 and 20 for Silver Lake. Now, they already look like, Quincy looks like they're going to have 7 on 5. Oh, 8 on 5. Yeah. And Colm Gary trying to bring down Lofstrom and coming up to make the play from behind was number six for North Quincy, Grant Murphy. Lofstrom on the carry. Tackled by Ben Murphy. Yeah, Silver Lake looked like they only had their five linemen and one running back to uh, to block in North Sunt. Um, eight. <laughs> so, simple math. Gain of one. That'll bring up third and 19 for the Lakers. Gary came up and made the initial hit, and Lostrom was able to sneak away from him, but Grant Murphy came up from behind to bring him down for North Quincy, so that they'll say it was a gain of one for Lostrom. Third and about 19 now. Lakers back at their own 20. Sneak fake punt. Nope. <laughs> Lostrom looking to pass down the middle of the field, oh, and ball. it is complete. Number 88 on the reception, Tommy Olson up to the 35-yard uh, line. That's Tommy Olson. Now, now I don't know what Silver Lake's going to do. They started off with an onside, only being down by one score. I wonder if they're going to try to go for it. Looks like though that they did switch up their unit. You can hear the North Quincy coach down the sideline, uh, Ryan Craig, stay on sides, stay on sides. Yeah, it's easy uh, it's a, get somebody to jump. A five-yard penalty would give Lakers a first down. Yeah, it's, snap it. <laughs> Silver Lake was looking for a offsides or an encroachment on North Quincy. You could see someone jump slightly. Timeout, Lakers. So Lakers have to call a timeout with 4.25. Have to go in the third quarter. So sometimes I, I see teams will catch, if, if it's third down, you're deep in your own territory. You come out in shotgun and do a quick um, punt from that. I know you give up a down. Right, but it is a close game. Sometimes like that, it catches the defense off and you can get that deep pump because there's nobody back there to field it. Now, now it'll just be a traditional punt, which isn't helping. Because <laughs> their special teams has been pretty off today. Well, J.J. Devine had a great punt back in the second quarter that pinned North Quincy deep in their territory. We'll see if he can get another kickoff here. He'll be kicking it into the wind. Still gets a nice kick there. Wobble. And yeah. 
Let's see Kai Bounce it takes. Takes a Silver Lake bounce, but just stops actually yeah, in. the 26. Like you said, 26 is where it will be marked down. Number 21, that's Kyle Neal for the Lakers. The ball he spotted at the 26-yard line of North Quincy. Are you ready for the NFL draft, John? I am. I am ready for the Patriots to trade down into the third round. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I... I, I Personally, I think all the speculation that they think Belichick's going to trade up or draft a quarterback, I, I think he is just going to take the best defensive player that's left on the if, – if he stays where he is. Well, to be honest, I mean, there's some stud you, – you're looking at, like, a really good cornerback and a really good pass rusher available. Right, because if, if there's – so There's so many receivers <coughs> and quarterbacks that are going to go right. on the first ten picks. Like, you would have normally, like, a top eight defensive player, like, at 15. So I wouldn't mind if they do that. I, you know, I actually I don't know. I, based on that team, and I know everyone's knocking Cam Newton. I mean, they went what? Um, seven and nine. Seven and nine with Cam Newton, and literally, you know, the like kids that got cut from youth football at defense. <laughs> Can you imagine? On offense. Like, on offense. On, an, an offense. Literally, they had, apparently, they had um, a random selections of employees at Gillette Stadium <laughs> that would just randomly get at, at, at wide receiver. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I mean, like you said. This Normally the hot dog vendor, but. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be five quarterbacks taken probably. You know, you said yeah. a couple of receivers. That, well, that yeah, tight end of Alabama, out of. Alabama, yeah. Uh, that tight end. So, yeah, maybe they could have the top linebacker or um, like I said, whoever it might be, they can pick up at 15. Um, but I'm not holding my breath for a quarterback to be taken unless something drastic happens. Liam Hines, yeah. on, the carry. Liam Hines on the carry for North Quincy and they're going to mark him down at the 30. That's Ben Carroll. That's a four-yard pickup, second and six. But I also wouldn't be surprised if like I said, he traded down to 27 or something like that. And oh, I wouldn't be surprised if they go from 15 to 20, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and get like another third-round pick or something like that, you know, because they lost it because they were f illegally filming Cincinnati. <laughs> 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 or was it Cleveland, one of the Ohio teams? <laughs> it was for the Do Your Job documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, so right, second again. down and Mari on the carry this time. That's a nice job fighting his way forward. And again, we talked about keeping those feet moving. And Mari gets up to what the 33 yard line. Number 28, Thomas Murray on the carry. Pick up a three. That's going to bring up third and three. So third and three now for North Quincy. Uh, I'm going toss right. Under three minutes to go here in the quarter. Motion number five. Yep. There you go. Lee <laughs> goes in motion. Oh, no. I saw middle. And they're going to go up the middle for Hines. Didn't and get it. he's going to be about a yard shy of the first. Actually, no, I don't know. Let's see. This short. Hines on the carry. Close to the line to gain. They swat the ball at the 41. And looks like they're going to call for a measurement. Official timeout for a measurement. Oh, no, excuse me, it's probably at the, at the 36. Excuse me, I said the 41. A measurement? You can, I can see from here. Oh, they they nudged it from where the um, when the official by the chains crew originally spotted it. When the side judge came in from uh, the North Quincy side, Damien, he initially said it looked like a first down to move the chains, but and it looks like, yeah, it will be now. Looks like oh, uh, first down, North Quincy. It is a red raider. You can't see it. Correction, raider, first down. With all the players in front of the change there, it's tough to see what the uh, where it was, but it's a first down. Either way, wherever it was, you, you know, it would have been fourth and an inch. Right. So speaking of the draft, the the top receiver from Alabama, um, 
they didn't do the combine, but his weigh in on 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 uh his pro day was at 161 pounds. Now this kid's on the field <laughs> playing that position. Yeah, way much more than that right now. Wow. I don't know how that could translate to the NFL. Boom. Nice run there by number 34, Michael Gorman. He's going to pick up another first down for North Quincy. They're going to spot him down at the 47-yard line. All the way to the 47-yard line of North Quincy. 145 left to go here in the third quarter. It's weird to be talking about the NFL draft in the in, end of in, April. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, again, everything, the timeline for everything is just, you know, thrown off. Um, and it's just been even... Thanks, COVID. <laughs> even that much more discussion about, you know, I'm, I'm tired of listening to Felger and Maz listen about, you know, who the Patriots are going to trade up to get to the quarterback yeah. or who they're going to draft and or all the other you know, uh, mock drafts of... Oh, Mel Kuyper has the pages trading up to seven. To, I'm like, that's not going to happen. You know, it's yeah. just all the speculation. Gorman on the, carry. Gorman on the carry again for North okay. Quincy, and they're going to say no gain. Second and ten. I do like how, with you know, the pandemic, how basketball started late, and it's going to stay that way now. It's going to start. They're going to kick off their season with like the Christmas Day games. Well, I've heard speculation if that's going to be still going to happen or not yet. Yeah. Um, some of the players weren't too sure if they'd like to have that later start uh, permanently or not. Power right. Hines over to the right side, Looking across the 50 yard line, and it gets across the 45 up to the down. 44. And he's going to be just shy of the first down marker. Tackled by number 34 for the Lakers, Eddie Sigliano. He'll bring up third. So third and about a one and a half for North Quincy. And that is going to end the third quarter here as North Quincy will let the final couple of seconds run out. So end of three quarters of play, North Quincy hanging on to a seven-point lead, 14-7, to seven, and threatening here as well as they're now in Silver Lake territory. Well, even at the end of it all, I'm sure these kids are glad that they were able to have a football season. Um, we were talking during halftime about how they are not allowed to go in the locker rooms, but teams are, you know, Silver Lake huddled up on a bus and took, was it, like a two-hour drive to get from Silver Lake to here? No, it's not that long. No, Silver Lake <laughs> is awful. There, There is no direct road to get to that high school. <laughs> At some point, you have to drive, like, off-road. It's just, I actually refed a long time ago, Quincy playing Silver Lake, and the fog rolled in. Oh, it was... It was actually kind of cool because of that, but driving home, there was deer everywhere, and being a city kid, I was just freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to hit a deer. Does, does you know, insurance cover that? <laughs> There's a few. Middle is another school that's hard to get to. And then Mashpee. Like, when you cross the bridge at Mashpee, if you look where it is on the map, it's, like, right over the bridge. But when you cross the bridge, it's 45 minutes away. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to take side streets to get there. But overall, like I said, I'm glad to see that the kids were able to have their games, you know. No, I think that was the, the overall yeah. feeling from people that they were able to get there, especially the seniors. Yeah, get there especially the seniors. It really, it really stinks that you put four years in and then you have this weird fall too, and there's no playoffs or anything, but or Thanksgiving Day games, which are awesome. Our right, third I, and one, well, and big run there by Hunter McIsaac across the 20 yard line. He'll get brought down at a across the 30 yard line. Gets brought down about the 26. It's a great run there by McIsaac. Yeah, I mean. North Quincy's not doing anything anything tricky with them. They're coming right at them. That's just you know power eye ISO right right through the C gap. The uh, the old saying goes, offense opens doors and defense has to close them. So Silver Lake isn't closing any doors.
All right, first and 10 for North Quincy. Again, ball at the 26-yard line. Lee in motion, and just as they want to snap the ball, flag thrown. Now the far side judge marker. threw that. Play a game. And delay of game is called. Gets Interesting. Five-yard penalty. Really? Did that really seem like 40 seconds went by? <laughs> Did seem kind of quick. Damn, you mentioned uh, crossing the bridge going to Mashpee. Um, yesterday, uh, QATV has recently purchased a new production truck, a new mobile production truck. Yeah. And uh, we had to uh, go down the Cape for a, a couple of things for it. And um, it was weird coming back over on Route 6. There's a uh, temporary set of traffic lights on Route 6 because hmm. uh, of the construction on the on the bridge. Temporary traffic lights? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird how they have it set up, but you know, yeah. it's a set of you know working lights, and on Route 6 you see the red light and you stop, and then the traffic coming from 6A can come on, huh. and then they get the red light, you get the green light to, to go. So it was, it was weird as you're going over, it's like, oh yeah, there's the set of lights on the highway. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, almost kind of reminded me, you know, up on uh, on Route 1, and I don't know if that, is that in Lynn where there's a set of lights kind of like random up mm -hmm. there. I think that's um, Lynn up there. Yeah, it is. It's like so. between Lynn and, and uh, what's the uh, fancier town on the other Linfield. side? Linfield? Yeah, Linfield. <laughs> Speaking of fancier towns, you see Massachusetts got the number one snobby estate. Oh, I did not know. According to some arbitrary ranking system. It's not a friendly state. I will give it that. <laughs> exploring uh, and 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 I fall I fall soon under that. You know, like me and you, me and you, we both took the T to get get the college. You know, pass is was almost intercepted again good? there by Silver. I should humps. No incomplete, huh? Let's see. Yeah, when incomplete, I thought it was almost intercepted. Pass was looking for. I wonder if you got that out of bounds. Pass was uh, intended for Declan Gary. Intended for 81, Declan Geary. That'll bring up third and 14. But going back to the unfriendliness, you know, when I'm on public transportation, I, I don't want to talk to people. I want to read or listen to a podcast. Granted, I haven't been on the tee in a while, but <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see, I can understand that. Um, apparently, that's snobbish. I think it's a Northeast thing where... Yeah, you know, if you get on the train in New York, you're not really talking to people either. You're just we got things to do. Hanson's pass is incomplete. Was looking for 88, Colm Gary, but he could not bring it in. Oh, I almost thought he was going for um, a hook and ladder. <laughs> how he, how, uh, how his his hands probably just came down really. Oh, and we're uh, roughing the passer call. Our penalty, excuse me, was down on the field as well. So North Quincy will get a uh, 15 yards and automatic first down. I actually do want to see the replay of that. I didn't see that. 15-yard penalty. Replay! And automatic first down. So they're going to mark it up to the 16-yard line. The ball at the 16-yard line. First and 10 Raiders. All right, so North Quincy gets a call there in their behalf. Hines on the carry, crosses the 15, gets up to about the 13. If you notice, Silver Lake now is just kind of, you know, call bear crawling, grabbing grass, cutting. Uh, basically, at this point, they're trying to just clog the A gaps, which are on both sides of the center, and the B gaps. I think that is forcing North Quincy to run more outside. Gorman on the carry over to the right side, crosses the 10 and up to about the 9 yard line it looks like. Nice run there by Michael Gorman. Inside the 5. 
And looks like they are calling a timeout on the field. Silver Lake's defense must be exhausted. I feel I feel like they've been on the field all game. Well, looks like 77's helmet came off, so he has to come out for a play. And they spot the ball at the nine-yard line. That's going to be third and three. Let's go. Probably toss left. Throw a guy in motion to contribute to the block or try to pull away a corner. Oh, oh. Timeout. And, yep, timeout called by North Quincy. Or water break. Timeout, Raiders. Yep. So 7.52 left to go in the ball game. Again, North calls timeout. And when they come back, it'll be third and about three from the Silver Lake nine-yard line. Now, in the history of Quincy, John, <laughs> has North Quincy ever considered separating from Quincy a la Quebec from Canada or North California <laughs> from Southern California? No, I don't believe there's been any... Um, um, se secession talk uh, on, on the north part of the city. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny, you know, uh, as, a, as a transplant, Damien, to, to Quincy, yeah. and I, I know you enjoy it, um, uh, Quincy is definitely a, uh, a Mar city Mar of... Uh, Marymount is a slice of heaven, John. <laughs> I agree a thousand percent. <laughs> but that's what I was going to say. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's a big city, but everyone food, has their neighborhood. Food, yeah, we had a food truck down by the cantina. Today. Food truck Fridays I've yep. been seeing from the Marymount Association. Uh, but yeah, you know, you know, it's a uh, big city, but everyone has their neighborhood. So whether yeah. it's, you know, you know, Marymount or the Neck or North Quincy, South Quincy, West Quincy or Swan or whatever it might be, you know, it's everyone has their own little neighborhoods like that. Um, so it's uh, it is definitely interesting when I mean, you talk to people that aren't from Quincy, yeah. and then that you hear two people talking from Quincy. Yeah, oh, where are you from, Quincy? Oh, well, what part? It's instantly yeah. like that. Oh you know, yeah, they're not you, a lot of other you, cities you like gotta that. You got to judge as part of the <laughs> snob snobby state award. <laughs> <laughs> Toss left, boom. All right, Hines on the carry. Oh, nice move there by Hines to try to get outside. Flag thrown on the play. Hines gets brought down at the nine. Hines on the carry. Holding. That's going to come back. Matt Smith. It is a penalty marker. I'll be at the point at the point of the hold. So, uh, see, that's the other thing. Like that back judge threw that flag. You're supposed to put the flag where the penalty happens. Well, the penalty flag's at the 13. So, ah, it's just my. This is why an ump should be there, John. Because <laughs> you can just drop the flag accurately. Throwing the flag across the field. I mean. All right, so they're going to spot the ball back to the 22 on the North Quincy hold. Let's go with uh, play action, QB waggle right. That's my prediction. <laughs> All right. Colm Geary goes wide to the right for North Quincy, and wide left goes Brendan Hines. Send Hines in motion. Oh, toss. Pitch to the right, oh. Hunter McIsaac gets hit in the backfield immediately, and he's oh, going to pass it himself. Flicker. And Picked off. Oh, goes no. incomplete at the last second. Looked like it was a nice job there by Brendan Hines for North Quincy to knock that ball away. <laughs> Somebody in the stands is yelling to kick, kick the, the field, field goal. goal. Yeah. Well, let's see here. They're bringing in a different team, and it looks like they are going to go for the field goal. So, let's see, ball spot at the 22-yard line. So, oh, the block is 39-yard field goal attempt. Yard field goal. Number two, corner plant to hold. Now, where's the wind's kicking up, too, right now. See that flag? All right, good snap, good hole. Kick is up, and it's going to be short. Ooh. Silver Lake's going to feel it in their own end zone. And a flag was, excuse me, a flag was thrown and a whistle. Oh, well, they're going to say, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, there's some little pushing and shoving on the Silver Lake sideline there. Uh. I'm not sure if they're going to allow the, the run back or not. 
And they're going to say it's a touchback. Is it though? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to see exactly I'm what to was. Remember. I mean, well, when I refed, it was still the NCAA rules. Now it's Federation. I mean, that was in the. In the end zone. I mean, you know, Alabama lost that game with that famous missed field goal that they returned. Yeah, by Auburn there, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Dean! So the same rules don't apply as a point after attempt. So, let's see. They're going to spot the ball at the 20 yard line. So they're just giving it as a touchback, which doesn't make sense to me because. Really? What if what if he caught it at, at the 10? Well, I mean, it, the other thing, too, is Silver Lake just lost two yards there as well. They, the ball was at the 22-yard line um, when the attempt was what happened. And I missed uh, where he ran it back to. I got a feeling somebody doesn't know. <laughs> Either that or that's a really weird rule for Federation to say, if you miss a field goal, it's a touchback. Because, yeah, you know, like you said, John, they didn't kick it from the 20. And right. and he, he fielded that cleanly. Um, you know, good, thing, well, good thing the internet exists. That play was considered a touchback. And the ball does come out to the 20, first and 10. All right, so they start from the 20. Number nine, Lofton on the carry. Taken down by number 88, Paul. Lofstra's going to keep it himself. So Lofstra gets the ball up to about the 29 yard line. Excuse me, the 24-yard line, excuse me. Ooh, Looking downfield, nice and he's just going to overthrow his intended receiver there by four or five yards. For number 20, Sam 20 should have kept running instead of looking back for the ball. Slows himself down. Got, have, trust your quarterback's arm, kid. Clock stops at 6.21 left to go in the game. Third and six. I right, lost from the shotgun looking to pass. Fires over to the left side. It's complete to Tommy Olsen. Olsen slips, puts his hand down to stay up, and we'll pick up a big yardage there for Silver Lake. Olsen gets all the way up to the 42-yard line. Yeah, those uh, those referees really messed up. So a, a field goal is no different than a punt. <laughs> well, so I don't know how there was a touchback. Two-yard line. Um, yeah. By number four mm, maybe four I should go back into reffing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and they're going to stop the clock for a water break here with 6.13 to go in the game. So now you have the weird that they signed to the NFL, as Felger and Maz like to say, like with baseball, the nerds are getting involved in the game mm -hmm. with the with the uh, analytics and percentages. Let's say, hypothetically, Silver Lake scores, do you go for two? Should they go for two? Yeah, because won't, won't, won't all the analytics computer programs say go for two on that? Um, I have no clue. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I, for, I, would, I, I, mean I would say they probably would go for two. I mean, yeah. although... Um, do they have overtime in uh, I don't know what with the new rules do they Uh no cuz this isn't a, a No, it is a league game. It's a they're league both game. The but they're league. both in the Patriot League but they're different divisions. Yeah, so So I don't know if that's considered a league game technically or not. Yeah. Lostrom fakes the pass, he's going to run it himself and coming up there was number 44 Matt Craig on the tackle for North Quincy at the 45. Boy, Matt. Free out pickup. Second and seven, Lakers. Oh. I bet 
last game of the season, go for the win on the road. Yeah. You know, isn't that kind of like the old, old tradition that you know if you're a tie at home and uh, uh, go for the win on the road? Go for the win all the time. All the time. <laughs> See if. Uh, and you saw this five man come in for pressure. Lost his pass complete to Olsen over to the right side. Nice he breaks move. up the middle of the field and gets just tripped up from behind at the 30 yard line. Matt Craig, a nice job to bring him down. But again, Olsen gets all the way up to the 30 yard line for a big gain for the Lakers. Inside the 30, first and 10 Lakers. You know what I appreciate from the booth, John? The view of the estuary. Well, not really. The creek, I guess. I'm sorry, say that again. I said I, I appreciate the view of the creek. Oh. The tide's low, though. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice Black's Creek, Black's creek view from over here. Both. Smith on the carry over to about the 20-yard line. Finished that run well. And Silver Lake players down. Actually, no, he's going to get back up. Looked like he was holding his knee, but... Yeah, uh, you got two. Uh, <laughs> he's going to need some help getting off the field there, but they spot the ball at the 20-yard line. Yeah, he's good. Just use the other knee. Looks like it was um, June Henriksen who got hit. He looks like he got hit by his own player when um, he was coming in. Uh, Smith was coming in. He got tackled. And actually, Smith might have pushed him on the north because he played his back into, uh, into Henriksen. So really, it's time to bleed the clock down, too, as yeah. it continues to run. Yep, under four and a half minutes to go. It might be one of those go-for-two situations, John. At the end of the game, yeah. So, see, situations like this, when they're in the pistol like that, I never liked because, you know, if you just want to go for one. Blostrom um, keeps the ball. Ball comes fumbled. loose. Oh, and... Man. I think North Quincy has. It's waiting for confirmation. I'm not too sure, though. He's saying. Actually, Silver Lake thinks they have it now. And they do. Silver Lake wow. has it. So Silver Lake's able to get the ball back, and it's inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Now, did he illegally bat the ball forward? That's the 7th. First and goal to go. So again, Silver Lake catches a huge break there. Ball came loose from Lofstrom and that is really a, recovered. That is a huge break. He was probably trying to reach out to gain as much yards as he could. Under three and a half to go now in the game. Four man spread. Lofstrom looking to pass over to the left side. Complete at the three yard line and it looks like it was Olsen on the, for, like, on the catch. Pass is complete. Just inches. Olsen's going to get up to the one yard line. Ball's on the one yard line. So, like, we'll definitely try to bleed the clock down. Surprised actually going this quickly to the, um, to the line of scrimmage. See, like, classic example. Ball came snapped before they were ready for it, and Austin Smith on the carry. Austin Smith got the ball. They s certainly weren't ready for it. Smith was get, was talking to Ben Lofstrom, and the ball snapped. And luckily for Silver Lake, loss of one on the play. Uh, Smith was able to hold on to it. Third and goal from the two. Loss of one on the play for the Lakers, though. We're going back to this is what, what I was saying, you know, being under a Oh, see now he's going into center. So this is that's exactly what I what I meant when you can't do that when you're in pistol. All right, and he was trying to get a push from behind was Ben Lofstrom, but didn't go get in. I say he got maybe to the one and they do they say a gain of one to the one. That's a good job in North Quincy. That's all willpower right there. You know what's coming. They know what's coming. Nick Peterson, number 44, was in the backfield to try to push Lofstrom in, but 
The North defense was right there to meet the challenge. So it is now fourth and goal from the one. We'll see if the North defense can hold here. 126 left to go in the game. They come up with the same formation. Lostrom, big quarterback. And timeouts called down the field by North Quincy. I would probably go for the field goal and then the onside. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes situations like that, people think it's so easy at the one-yard line, but it's it's the worst ones. You got so many plays in your head that you're trying to go through. Um, you know, in defense, it's it's the same thing. You're thinking common sense. You're just going to smash it up the middle, right? Um, but oh, maybe it's a play action. Maybe there's going to be a. Well, Silver Lake has a wide receiver wide to the that, right, that's saying that, and then they have like ten men. Height, like victory formation. I right, lost one to center. Over to the left side to handoff and touchdown. Silver Lake number nice 30. Play. Great play. John Dickinson gets the ball and pushes it in for the touchdown. Touchdown Lakers. It was that number 30 for Yep. So how we how we kept running to that pylon is exactly what you do. So many kids don't have the discipline, they want to cut up. You know, the second they pass the tackle and that's usually how you get held up, but he just kept running. You young kids at home, do that. I say he was set up in the, the right wing position, um, and everyone went forward, and he just went to the left and got the ball. And uh, North Quincy saw that. A couple of players went with him. Matt Craig just couldn't catch up to him to bring him down. All right, so. So let's see. I don't see a block out there. It looks like Silver Lake's got to go for two. All right, so it's 14-13. Silver Lake going for the, the lead here. Lostrom in the shotgun. Rolling out to his right. Fires in the end zone. And incomplete was looking for Tommy Olsen. And Olsen got held up at the line. Looked like it was a nice job by North Quincy. I think it was uh, number 12 for North Quincy, Jamal Maximilian. We did a nice job putting the pressure there. And it goes incomplete. North holds on for the lead. Tommy Olson, I feel bad. See you here. He he stopped. I think he felt he was open, and the quarterback kind of saw more space, and he didn't. They just didn't connect. So 109 left to go here in the game. North Quincy with a one-point lead, and all right, it's onside kick time here. Silver Lake has two timeouts remaining. North Quincy with one. So there's a, uh, if anybody's interested on YouTube, you can look it up. There's a, a guy in Alabama, a high school coach who's never traditionally kicked. He's always onside kick, no matter, like he blows teams out. Oh, really? But yeah, and he has a gazillion onside kicks. One of the best ones I saw was a huddle. They broke out and then they re-huddled again and changed sides, but one kid never left the far side. And they just kicked it that way, and, the, and it was, uh, it happened so fast. It was a high school in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and t so he went to his own sideline, and no one saw him still yeah, there, right? Like, yep. Let's say, like, where number 21 is in Silver Lake. So they all huddled, and he stayed there, and then they decided to, to, to right. overweight on the other side. All right, so here we go. And ball came off the tee just as he was getting ready to kick it. J.J. Devine, number 37, is the kicker for the Lakers. So also, another thing kids never do is you can fair catch an onside kick. And so here we go, and high kick, like and they do call a fair catch. It. Oh, oh, ball comes loose though. He's North Quincy, and it looks like they were able to jump on it. 
And great job, Damien, calling for the onside yeah. kick there. A little Smart play. Good job on his end. A little small kick there. See, kids, always listen to your coaches. And flag thrown after the play here. Recovered by number 12, Jamal Maximilian. So now, what are you, what are you thinking, play. punt? Personal foul against North Quincy. <laughs> Well, not now. A personal foul against North Quincy is called. Oh, whatever, though. you got a minute left. Put in all the seniors. Kneel it out. So, see, the ball was initially spotted at the 30, so they got to move it back to the 15 with the penalty. 106 left to go in the game. Now, how many timeouts does uh, Silver Lake have? Two timeouts. So in hindsight, I wonder now if they've been going, ah, oh, we should have just kicked the field goal. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, the uh, that old adage, when you're on the road, you go for the win. Yeah. Our head coach Ryan Craig was talking to the referee for a second there. So North comes back out. So it looks like they're not going to kneel. They're probably going to continue to run just to eat their clock. Like I said, I don't know how many timeouts they have. Uh, North has one, Silver Lake with two. So so they still need to run a couple plays here. If they can get a first down, that will be it. Hines on the carry, goes up to the left side, and nice run there by Liam Hines. Silver yeah, Lake calls a, a timeout. Immediate timeout. And they're going to spot him down at the 18-yard line. Number 11, Liam Hines on the carry. Clock stops with exactly one minute to go. Pick up of three. Liam Hines, 18 rushes for 120 yards here tonight. Good way to end your senior year. Hines has had a great year for North Quincy. Right, gain of three on that last play for North Quincy. So. Silver Lake jumped a little bit, but I don't. So we'll see what the call is here. I, you know, some of this officiating tonight, like you, you realize that. Defense doesn't, <laughs> they can move. <laughs> and oh, and there you go, they they're win. saying. Uh, they, yeah, they. How is he yelling at him for that? <laughs> That's not well, offside. I, I, well, I, I think part of it is, you know, they've been, they've been calling that all game as offside. So. I know, and it's. Whether they it's got not. it right here. No, I know, but, yeah. like, you know, it's, I, I don't know if it's, you know. You know, you talk about, you know, in basketball, you set a precedent for what's a foul yeah. early or not. Obviously, this, you know, in football, it might be a little bit more black and white. Did, were you over the line or not? All right, it, it, was, um, it, was it a field goal attempt that you returned? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I would, I would, if I was the Civil Lake coach, I would be sending this video to the officials, the official officials. <laughs> All right, second down, Hines on the carry. And nice run here by Hines. Time Snuck out. through to get it to the second level. So, and they're going to mark him down yeah, at the 27. 47. So, well, there could be a punt. The pick up of four. So, Third and two. they're going to need, they have 40, so about 55 seconds. So, the they'll probably run, up, run another play if they don't get a first down. Then um, they're going to have to punt it. Uh, they spot Hines down at the 23-yard line, so bring up a third and two for North Quincy. North Quincy really needs a first down to um, to get this uh, to s put this away. It's it's actually not over yet. <laughs> so if North Quincy runs a play here, Damon, they don't get the first down. They take 40 seconds down off the clock, so and maybe about 15 seconds, seconds left, left to go. They'll probably have to punt it. Or actually, be more. Or maybe go for it again. Who knows? Um, well, there'll be about 10 seconds left to go. You know, assuming this is running play, and 50 seconds left, take off I, the 40. Yeah. So. So it'll be tough to tell. See if they can uh, run around a little bit if they want to on the end of the the play there. 
All right, we'll see what happens here. Third and about two for North Quincy. Like Tecmo Bowl, you just run around the field. Yeah, run around the, the field clock. and throw it away. Give it to Hines, and, and he's going to be met in the backfield. And Hines on the carry, no gain. So no gain on the play for Liam Hines. So bring up fourth and two. I, you know, not for nothing. You might as well go for it by the like, by the amount of time that's left, right? That play could eat up those few seconds, and if not, you know, it's even more pressure on Silver Lake. So head coach Ryan Craig is down there getting ready to call a timeout with one of the officials, and and they call it with eight seconds remaining. Timeout Raiders. Eight seconds remain. Eight seconds. You could. Eight seconds is an average run play. Ever long jet sweep. Try to stay up. I should eat the clock. <laughs> a nail biter. So yeah, coming down to literally the last eight seconds of the game here with North Quincy. It's a fourth down for North Quincy. Ball is at their own 23 yard line, but again, that eight seconds is really the key thing. So we'll see what head coach Ryan Craig has up his sleeve and what play they have ready to go. And Now for Silver Lake, it, it almost, it almost, um, you know, do you want to put all, all, all the effort into returning that punt? Or, um, or fair catch and try to do a, yeah. well, ball is going to be fielded at the 49 yard line for Silver Lake. Up the middle of the now, field goes the carrier. Has some space and finally get brought to the 30 yard line and time has expired. That is the end of the game. That was a great game. Officials trying to make sure that everything stays friendly here. And North Quincy trying to get everyone back on the field. And that is the end of the game there. So North Quincy kicks the ball away, and they're able to come up and make the tackle. One of the better played games you've seen here in Eastern Mass this season. So it was a nice return there by Silver Lake to try to make something happen. Got up to about the 30-yard uh, the line before the carrier ball carrier was brought down. And with that, the game is over. So North Quincy ends their season with a big victory here, 14-13 over the Lakers, Damian. Yeah, great way to end the season. I think both teams played well. Yeah, it was an, ex it was an exciting game for Happy both teams that here. The, uh, hat, that, you know, the seniors got to play. Great night for football. Yep. What's this, like October, November? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, you know, uh, 55 degrees. It was a little over 60, I think, at uh, kickoff. So it was uh, a great night for it, like you said. And, um, yeah, great that uh, the seniors for uh, for North Quincy and Quincy High were able to get uh, games in here this year. Uh, and, you know, instead of having nothing at all, have a great season. Um, like I said, it wasn't Thanksgiving between the two teams. And unfortunately, it wasn't even a, you know, a Friday night football game under the lights. But they were able to get that game <laughs> in on a Sunday a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, it was an exciting game. And, um, uh, and then North Quincy had a uh, tough loss last week against Plymouth South. But they were able to come out here today with a victory over Silver Lake. So, um, so yeah. That nice, nice season, uh, short season, but it was it was a nice one nonetheless. And you know these kids will now get ready to, uh, you know, take a couple days off, and then on Monday go right back into the spring season for some of these I kids. Know. For Jeez. like you said, whether it's lacrosse. But you, but you know what? It's like that. It would have been like that in for winter sports. You know, basketball starts basically the day after Thanksgiving. You know, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I wish they had more time. You know, across the state for the kids to get ready for football, maybe there wouldn't have been as many injuries. Well, yeah, that was certainly one of the things uh, that I think had a lot of people worried about. But um, 
the shortened season and you know, shortened timeline just all around to uh, to get that in. But nonetheless, they do or they did, and it was an exciting season here at Veterans Memorial Stadium uh, for both schools. So um, again, final score here: North Quincy 14, Silver Lake 13. Uh, real quick, we'll run down some stats for North Quincy. Cooper Hanson was only one of four passing, but that one completion was a 20-yard touchdown pass to Brendan Hines uh, back in the first quarter, and that got North Quincy going. Uh, for rushing the ball, Liam Hines had another great game. 20 rushes for 125 yards and one touchdown. So great job there and a great season all around there by Liam Hines. Hunter McIsaac had three rushes for 22 yards. Thomas Murray had seven rushes for 38. And Michael Gorman had three for 15 for North Quincy as well. For Silver Lake, Ben Wastrom was six for 11 passing for 75 yards. Uh, Austin Smith had 16 rushes for 56 yards and a touchdown. Wastrom also had nine rushes for 69 yards for the quarterback as well. Tommy Olsen had a good game for himself for the Lakers. Five receptions for 78 yards. Uh, also, John Dick, uh, Dickinson had that one-yard touchdown run at the end of the fourth quarter for the Lakers as well to bring them within a point. But North Quincy had a great job there on the two-point conversion. Jamal Maximilian uh, had a nice job to knock the ball away on defense for North Quincy to preserve that one-point victory uh, here for North. And again, that the punt at the end of the game is there as well. It was uh, played nicely by North Quincy to make sure that Silver Lake could not run it back. So, uh, great game, I said, Damien, and uh, it was yeah. nice to have a nice game here at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. Always is <laughs> best stadium in the uh, in the state, in my opinion. That it is. That it is. I want to thank uh, Ryan McWade, who's been up on the camera for all the football games here for QA TV this year. So, I want to thank Ryan for all his hard work. And Damien, thanks for coming out here for uh, joining me here today. Always and, uh, a pleasure, John. <laughs> again, I got the uh, again the Sports Night Magic back here this time up in the booth. It has been uh, been a little while since you and I have done any uh, uh, game or commentary. The last time you and I did a game was back in 2002. We did a Suffolk University men's basketball game. Uh, that was the last time we did a ba basketball game together we or anything together. No, we did we did a Quincy versus Malden Catholic game. Oh, that's yeah, right. We, do, we did. We did do that. I forgot about that. And then we got foe after. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, but we uh, actually, I believe I still owe you uh, breakfast um, oh, the at the wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. We, we we had a nice little bet that game, and uh, <laughs> that was a number of years ago. So I guess yeah. you should maybe pay up on that breakfast at the <laughs> at the, at the wheelhouse. So, uh, well, anyway, so uh, thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. And uh, again, thanks to Ryan McWade on camera as well. So uh, thanks for all our viewers. Again, North Quincy 14, Silver Lake 13. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports, and we will see you next time.